Hello everyone, my name is Maximilian Rettinger and I'm a PhD student at the Technical University of Munich. The following results were achieved in cooperation with the University Hospital Rechts der Isar. Priming a medical device is an extremely complex procedure. Usually the medical professionals learn this from a manufacturer's expert, which trains them on a device locally. Unfortunately, studies have shown that the training success is insufficient. This in turn can be negative for the patient's health in critical situations. The reasons are too large training groups, an obstructed field of vision, and the missing possibility to practice the shown on the device. Therefore, we evaluated if there are more suitable training methods by comparing the following three methods. Group training, video training, and virtual reality training. As a use case, we have chosen the priming procedure of our hemodialysis machine. With an expert and the manual, we defined 60 training steps. 43 of these steps require an interaction with the device. In order to compare the three training methods, we implemented them as follows. For the group training, a medical expert demonstrated the priming procedure on a device. It's just like conventional training. The participants were able to ask any questions they had. Due to the current hygiene measures, the training didn't take place in a small room as usual, but in an auditorium which means that the subject's field of vision was not negatively affected. In total, there were five training sessions in which between two and eight subjects participated. For the video training, we recorded a medical expert who shows the priming procedure. Also, voice recordings for each step were created by a professional voice actor and integrated into the video. During the study, subjects watched the video on an iPad and were allowed to pause, fast forward or rewind the video. There was no time limit. For the VR training, we remodeled the dialysis machine as well as the environment in Blender. We used the Oculus Quest and implemented the training in Unity. Instructions for the respective steps were visualized to the participants as text cues. The same voice recordings from the video training were also played. For interaction, we have only used three interaction methods, so that users are not unnecessarily distracted. Because the medical staff's main part has no virtual reality experience, the participants completed a tutorial scenario before they started the VR training. In this scenario, they learned how to use the VR equipment and the three required interactions. To obtain meaningful data, we only recruited people with a medical background. It was also important that they hadn't been trained for this device previously. To measure the learning success, we used five relevant items from different questionnaires. These were rated by the participants after the training. Seven days later, they received an online test with 16 questions. We applied the Crisco Wallace test to detect significant differences followed by the Man whitney test with a Bonferroni correction as postdoc. These results show how the participants rated their feeling for implementing what they've learned in the training. The values are based on a 7-point Likert scale, which ranges from strongly disagree to strongly agree. As can be seen, the VR training performed significantly higher. Although the training content was identical, the VR training exercise structure also obtained the best results. The question, if the topic was presented interestingly, the VR training again received the highest score. These results show the rating of the quality of the content. The values are based on a 6-point Likert scale, ranging from very good to not sufficient. The VR training received the best rating. In response to which grade the participants would give the training overall, the VR training received the best rating. In the online test, which participants received over 7 days, only 78 of the original 83 subjects participated. The graph shows the percentage of the correctly answered questions. As can be seen, most of the questions were answered correctly by the VR training participants. Also, no simulations or complex interactions were integrated into the VR training. All values indicate that this training is the best. Also, this method offers the advantage that healthcare professionals can complete the training at any time, in any place, and as often as they want. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.